going back 12 years, and we know the story about how, uh, you know, I had read that, that you just knew, and that when the tower came down, you knew you lost your son, but I want to focus on the, the moment a couple months later when you picked up the New York Times and you read about this mysterious man in the red bandana as a hero. Tell me about that moment. Well, uh, it was an, an incredible moment for me. Uh, something had been driving me since the beginning to keep searching for wells, keep looking. Something was telling me that someday I might find, find him. And so his body was recovered on the 19th of March, 2002. So although he had been in his offices on the 104th floor at Sandler O'Neill and Partners where he worked, mm -hmm. at the time uh, the, the attacks began, his body was recovered with uh, firefighters that were um, at the incident command center under um, Donald Burns, uh, who was the incident commander. So I knew he had to have gotten, we knew he had to have gotten down somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a couple of months later, I was reading the story in the New York Times, the first big article trying to piece things back together, entitled Fighting to Live as the Towers Died. And I said, if I'm going to ever see anything about Wells, it will be here in the section that said 902 in the South Tower Sky Lobby. I said, it, it, if there will ever be a chance for me to see anything, it'll be here. So I started reading it, and sure enough, there they were, the references to this mysterious man in a red bandana, wow. a red kerchief, and wow. uh, by two different eyewitnesses. And, and the minute I read that, I said, and he was calling out fire commands, you know, someone who was trained in triage. and. Uh, and I, as the minute I read that, I said, oh, Wells, I found you. I, I found you. I, 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 and this, this young man who, you know, went to Boston College, was a leader on the lacrosse field, you know, had been to this volunteer firefighter since he was 16, chose this career in business, but here he is, these heroic actions that he's so, you know, respected in others come out of him. He chooses not to run. He's saving others, you know, by account, some, something like, you know, 12 people lived because of your son. And so because of his incredible story, tell me about Project Red Bandana, this curriculum that's helping other kids. Well, I'd be happy to. Thank you. We are very proud of this work. Uh, we were approached by uh, the Fetzer Institute that's based in Kalamazoo, Michigan, through a friend of our sons at Boston College, Tim, Timothy Epstein, uh, who's an attorney in Chicago. He was working on the Sports and Embodied Spiritual Practices uh, Advisory Council for the Fetzer Institute, and their mi mission is to study how love and forgiveness can work in the world. Hmm. So the Fetzer Institute approached us through Tim to say, uh, why don't you uh, give us a proposal for your next creative step? And uh, back in 2011 for the 10th anniversary, another friend of Wells's, uh, Drew Gallagher, produced a beautiful 13-minute documentary for ESPN uh, that actually won a, a sports Emmy last spring. And uh, so we had been receiving yet again another huge influx of tributes from students and teachers and coaches religious leaders uh, about Wells, and we knew there was a need. So I said, our next creative step needs to be developing a curricu curriculum. So I reached out to uh, Vernoy Paolini, who'd been invited by the 9-11 Museum to write curriculum, and uh, she chose Wells' story. She's an astonishing educator, mm -hmm. uh, and she put together a group, a team of, of educators who she'd worked with writing curriculum for the New Jersey Holocaust Museum, mm. uh, the DC Museum, uh, the Holocaust Museum in Washington, and yeah. the 9-11 Museum. 